Hello everyone, it's Andrea and welcome to the last empties and new products video of 2022. And I know we all feel like this when it's the end of the year. It's like we blinked and the whole year has gone by. I'm never going to stop being amazed at how fast it feels like time is going by. It just is a constant reminder for me to enjoy the moments when they do happen, like enjoy the nice moments and even the mundane moments in life to try and just find something to savor and pause and enjoy them because they go by really fast. But anyway, welcome to today's video. It's empties and new products time. And if you are new to my channel, empties and new products is a series that I've been doing for many, many years. And it's the love child of a haul video and an empties video. I share with you the products that I have used up and the new products that have taken their place. I'm also doing a little bit of a declutter at the end. Let's start with cleansers. I used up a CeraVe hydrating cleanser. This has been a staple in my beauty routine for probably the last 10 years. It's something that I don't stick to regularly, but I do repurchase it every now and then. It's just a basic gentle hydrating cleanser. It's great to use if your skin is irritated, if it's feeling dehydrated. It doesn't give you a thorough, thorough cleanse. I find that um, it sometimes it tends to almost feel like it leaves like a little bit of a residue on my skin. But if my skin is really sensitive and compromised, I'm almost welcoming that layer of nourishment that it leaves behind or I just use a warm washcloth to kind of make sure I get a more thorough cleanse. Then I moved on to the Versed Gentle Cycle Milky Cleanser. I really, really liked this. This was such a gorgeous milk cleanser. It felt a bit more hydrating than the CeraVe but it rinsed off better and this also did a much better job at breaking down makeup highly highly recommend checking this out if you are into milk milky cleansers especially now during winter you want something really gentle but effective that doesn't lather that doesn't leave your skin feeling too dry versed is such a great brand they also do a cleansing balm that's really good as well the cleanser that i'm using right now is from polish choice i received this in pr it's the ultra gentle cleanser from the polish choice calm range and i am enjoying this this isn't like the best cleanser I've ever used, but it is really nice. It definitely gives a more thorough cleanse than the CeraVe or the Versed. I feel like my skin feels a bit more clean. It doesn't foam up in the traditional foaming sense, but it does have a very slight, a very slight almost creamy lather when you work it into the skin and add water. I'm liking it. Not, not the best cleanser I've ever tried, not the worst, just just right, just in the middle. Let's move on to vitamin C serums. I have gone through two bottles of the SkinCeuticals Silly Marin CF. This is a really great l acid vitamin C serum geared towards people that are more oily and acne prone. There is also salicylic acid in this formula which helps keep the pores clear. There's also Silly Marin in here which is supposed to help uh, regulate oil production over time. And I just really, really enjoyed this vitamin C serum. Unfortunately, it does come with a very high price tag as all SkinCeuticals vitamin C serums go. Whenever I buy SkinCeuticals products, I always wait for a sale. I usually buy it from Derm Store or Skin Store. Those websites tend to run promotions periodically throughout the year, so that's usually when I dive into the SkinCeuticals world. I tried to use the Dr. Loretta Anti-Aging Repair Serum. This is another vitamin C serum, and unfortunately, this broke my face out. And usually what I do when something breaks breaks my face out, then I try to move down. I try to just use it on my neck and chest. And this also broke me out on my neck and chest. So then I use this up on the backs of my hands and it actually did a really, really nice job at evening, evening out my skin tone on the backs of my hands. It kind of got rid of any sun damage that I had on the backs of my hands. So this was effective, helping fade pigmentation. Unfortunately, just something on my face and neck, just something didn't agree because it broke me out when I tried to use it on that area of my body, but I did find a way to use it up. I do try to find a way to use things up, even if they don't work 
for for my face initially finally the vitamin c serum that i'm using right now is something that i bought in a black friday sale i had this particular brand and this particular serum on my wish list for quite a while they had a great promotion during black friday i believe it was 30 35 percent off so i took it as a sign to finally buy this vitamin c serum to try and i am loving it it's the hyper skin hyper even brightening dark spot vitamin c serum this is a vitamin c serum that also contains really, really great ingredients to help fade hyperpigmentation. It also contains a little bit of salicylic acid, so it's great if you have more combination oily skin, if you're acne prone. This doesn't contain L-ascorbic acid, which is like the gold standard form of vitamin C. This contains ethylated ascorbic acid, which is a stabilized form of it. There isn't as much research to support the efficacy of this particular ingredient compared to the efficacy of the L-ascorbic acid serum, but I've always actually had really nice results with ethyl ascorbic acid serums. So there are a lot of different vitamin C derivatives on the market. And while the gold standard is still the L ascorbic acid, that one tends to also be the most problematic. If you have sensitive skin, that one can tend to irritate you. That one can, can trigger breakouts sometimes. It's all about trial and error. And for me personally, ethylated ascorbic acid does a really good job. I am loving this vitamin C serum. So far, my experience and my results with this serum are on par with the results that I had with the SkinCeuticals, Silly Marin CF, and this is probably half the price, maybe a third of the price if you can get it on sale. So it's definitely more wallet friendly, especially for a vitamin C serum, you know, which is a serum that I use daily. And I also really love the fact that it comes in a pump. The texture is like a watery gel. It doesn't smell like anything. When it comes to hydrating serums, I had the SkinCeuticals Phyto Corrective Gel and I honestly can't really say that I loved this. I can't say that it gave me any special calming properties. It was just like a hydrating serum. You know, it does have a lot of botanical extracts that are meant to help reduce redness. But honestly, from this Phyto, Phyto Corrective line, I prefer the mask. That one, I, I definitely felt a more dramatic reduction in redness and a more intense calming effect. This didn't really do it for me. I mean, I used it up. It was, you know, an easy product to use up, just a nice hydrating layer to add, to layer with my skincare, but I wouldn't repurchase. I tried the Polish Choice Omega Plus Complex Serum. This is a This was a very rich serum, and I have some friends that use this instead of a moisturizer in warmer months, and unfortunately this broke me out on my face, but I was able to use this on my neck and my chest and it didn't break me out. So I was able to use it up, but unfortunately it broke my face out, so I would not, I would not revisit this product. Then came this, the Saatchi Skin Pro Resilient Serum. You know I love this. I've talked about this in favorites videos, already. I've been raving about it on Instagram. The first bottle was sent to me by the brand right before it launched, so I, I used it up and I loved it so much I went and repurchased it because it's just a fantastic hydrating serum, but it's a bit more than a hydrating serum because it contains ingredients that help soothe the skin. I honestly noticed more calming and redness reducing effects from this serum than I did with the SkinCeuticals. This also contains some antioxidants. It also contains some peptides, bioflavonoids. It's just a really great all round gorgeous barrier supporting serum. It does come at a pretty high price point, but for me, this is something that I can see myself repurchasing, especially during the winter time. It's very elegant. It's just a bit more special and a bit more sophisticated than a traditional hydrating serum. If you're somebody that is constantly struggling with uh, keeping your skin barrier healthy, if you're constantly struggling with irritation, if you're somebody that tends to love overdoing it with the retinols or with the acids, this serum will really, really help kind of keep your uh, skin barrier strong and it will help maintain a healthy barrier and will help your skin not be as angry and irritated. The final skincare empty I have is this uh, little container of uh, Patchology. What was this? The Rejuvenating Eye Gels. This was just, I mean, it's empty. So I'm showing you an empty jar, but this contained, I think 60 under eye patches. It's not something that I use 
regularly. This is just something that I like to keep on hand that I would just had in the fridge. I could go and apply these under under my eyes and they did a really nice job at um, hydrating and depuffing and it just felt really nice and soothing. But what I'm doing right now is actually even more effective. This Clarins Total Eye Gel. This is a really, really hydrating eye gel. It comes in a little, little baby tube like this, a cooling gel texture. And this contains caffeine, it contains ginkgo bilboa, it contains chamomile and cornflower extract. So it's um, definitely geared towards hydrating and depuffing. So what I'm doing now is if I need it in the morning, I apply a thick layer of this just all around my eyes and then I go in with one of these. This is a cryo stick and this is like a life-changing little device. Um, sounds very dramatic. You can get them on Amazon. Um, Biologique Recherche also uses them in the facials. When I went to, to LA a few months ago, I got a Biologique Recherche facial at um, their newly opened flagship location in Los Angeles. And at the end of the Biologique Recherche facial, the facialist, um, you know, did this custom blend of masks on my face. And then she put all these pre-soaked gauzes on my face and then she went in with a super 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 cold cryo stick and this is essentially i mean you could probably do the same thing with a spoon but this thing like the the curves are perfect for doing a nice sculpting facial massage and it's um filled with a liquid that just stays cold for a really really long time so usually i keep this in the fridge and it gets really cold fast and it stays really cold and during my Biologique Recherche facial, the facialist just went over and did this most incredible massage with this cold stick. And it felt amazing. So I have been like hooked on this little thing ever since. So what I've been doing, if I really need some help depuffing, if I need some help with lymphatic drainage, if I just need my under eye area to look a bit fresher, I apply a generous layer of this Clarins Total Eye Contour Gel, and then I go in with a cold, ice cold cryo stick, and I just do a nice massage. This helps the cryo stick glide really easily over the skin. And again, the shape of this, it's, it's like a spoon, but not really, because it has these the, like the perfect curves to really get in there, and it just feels so good. If you're somebody that struggles from headaches, I tend to get tension headaches, and this just helps me relax, and it feels so incredibly soothing. And this particular eye gel really leaves my under eyes feeling so, so refreshed, and it helps plump up any fine lines that I have around my eyes. Obviously, it's a temporary effect, but it, I definitely notice a difference, um, especially if my skin's really dehydrated. Sometimes dehydrated skin can show more fine lines. So this has been my current under eye savior because I have not been sleeping well and I haven't been eating well and I just need all the help I can get. The Way Super Dry Shampoo. This was the limited edition collaboration they did with Byredo and the Mojave Ghost scent and when I first started using this it really irritated my scalp it was almost too strong it is a very very effective dry shampoo the scent is also very very strong but I love the Byredo Mojave Ghost scent so I almost use this as like a hair fragrance because it smelled so good and so strong in the hair it could it smelled in my hair for days it was quite intense and I found that it irritated my scalp but then I also started incorporating the Biologique Recherche P50 for the scalp and that really helped balance my scalp and my scalp hasn't been irritated and flaky since. So I feel like that product has helped the, my overall scalp health and then when I incorporated this dry shampoo into my routine again, my scalp wasn't getting irritated anymore. So I ended up enjoying this in the end, but when I first started using it, I didn't like it. And then the Clorane dry shampoo, this is, oh my God, this has been a product that I've been using for years and years and years. And it's something that I always kind of go back and revisit. It's nice and, and gentle. This never irritated my scalp. It wasn't the strongest dry shampoo. So if you have really oily roots and you're really looking for 
for a hardworking dry shampoo, then this will not be it. But this is great for just like refreshing second or third day hair just a little bit when my hair isn't as oily. The dry shampoo that I'm using right now is from Kerastase and it's the Kerastase Fresh Affair Refreshing Dry Shampoo. And this really, really cleans the hair. I find that this has stronger oil control capabilities than the Chlorine, but not quite as strong as the Whey. So that's kind of where it lies on the scale. This has a very, very, very strong fragrance though. So I would not recommend ordering this blind. I would recommend smelling this in store beforehand because the scent is so strong that if you don't like the scent, you will hate this product because this will, again, this stays in your hair for a long time. Until you wash it, you will end up smelling this in your hair. I like the scent. It's a very, it's very floral. In terms of styling products, I have an empty. This is the Kerastase Discipline Fluidissime. This was like my go-to heat protectant. It took me about two years to use this up. And it was like a, a a lightweight kind of dry oil type of feeling. I liked it, but I'm using this right now and I like this more. This is the Kerastase Genesis Defense Thermique, a fortifying blow dry fluid for brittle thin hair. This is less oily. This is more of a light lotion type of feeling. This I, if I wasn't careful and if I used too much of this, it tended to weigh my hair down a bit. So this might be better suited for somebody that has a thicker hair type. But for me, my hair is very fine, very thin. This does a much better job. I also find that this detangles my hair really nicely and I love, love the scent. It smells like Atelier Cologne Orange Sanguine perfume, which is one of my favorite perfumes. It's like a blood orange scent. So it just, it smells, it's like that juicy, juicy, ripe orange. This is my new holy grail, blow drying, heat protectant serum. It has a spray, but I don't go in and spray this all over my hair. First, I spray it in the palms of my hands. I find that I get a better sense of distribution that way and I can better control where stuff is going. I apply this all over my damp hair, then I comb it through. Moving on to makeup, I have an empty and a direct repurchase, which you have seen before because this is a product that I've been repurchasing for a couple of years now, and it's the Sicily Double Tensor. This is a very, very expensive product, but it is my go-to special occasion primer. It just does something intangible, but really good to my skin. And it has a very subtle tightening effect. It's temporary, but it's really, really beautiful. So whenever I, I just really want to feel and look my best, I use this underneath my foundation. This is a very expensive product that I only buy once a year. I usually, you know, one of these usually lasts me a full year. And whenever Cicely do a friends and family sale, I get this for 25% off and I'm good to go. Then I also used up my NARS tinted moisturizer. I love this product so much. This is one of my favorite tinted moisturizers. I don't have a new tinted moisturizer in its place because I am really working towards using up stuff that I have open, especially when it comes to complexion products. I tend to be a foundation hoarder. It's my favorite makeup category. And one of my missions this year is to stop buying so many new foundations and to just just use up what I have. I used up um, the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. This is one of my favorite under eye concealers. It's a lighter coverage, but it does have this beautiful, fresh, lit from within luminous glow. And it's just really, really flattering under the eyes. And I really enjoy this. I will definitely repurchase this in the future. Then I used up my Lancome Tante Doll Ultra Concealer. I had this in the shade 215, which is the shade that I use the most often. This had like a slight pink undertone and then 250, which has more of a yellow undertone. I would use this more in the center of the face to kind of brighten my face, but under the eyes, I use shade 215, a fantastic concealer. I highly recommend it. It has more of a medium to slightly full coverage. It's just a a great all-rounder. The newest concealer that I ended up buying was the Giorgio Armani Power Fabric Concealer, which was another repurchase. And I only bought this because they had a 40% off sale. 
And this is a concealer that I love. So for 40% off, I, um, I repurchased it. And this is what I'm using right now. And I really, really love this. I think if you like one, you will like the other, but they, they do have slightly different properties. The addition of vitamin E makes this a bit more emollient. It makes this more suitable for the under eyes. This formula, I find that it's, um, it's not quite as emollient. It sets a bit better and it has uh, a better longevity. I also decluttered my rose ink concealer because it went bad. I like this concealer, but it wasn't, oh God, it smells really bad. I didn't love it enough to warrant an immediate repurchase. Like I would rather explore other concealers. It looked a bit too full coverage, a bit too heavy for my liking. I didn't like this under my eyes. So I used it up on other areas of my face. I just feel like if I'm going to go for a fuller coverage concealer to use all over my face, I prefer the Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage or the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer over this. I also used up three lip products, which I'm excited about. I think for my Project Pan 2023, I'm going to focus even more on, on using up lip products. This is the Jouer Fawn lip liner, which I really enjoyed. It was more of a brown lip liner and I liked it, but I like Pat McGrath contour lip liner better. Next, I used up my Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Topaz. This was just a beautiful everyday gloss, had a very subtle shimmer running through it. I just really, really hate the scent of this lip gloss. It was like a very synthetic coconut scent and that, that's probably the only reason why I wouldn't buy this again. Used up the Buxom Collagen Infused Lip Serum. This is really great. I actually have another one here. The brand kindly sent it to me and I love this. I love this as a lip plumping primer. So usually I apply this before I start doing my makeup. It does have a very strong tingling sensation but I like that sensation. It definitely boosts the circulation to your lips. And then at the end of, of the makeup, you know, before I put on my lipstick, I just kind of wipe off whatever excess lip product is on there. And then I apply my lip liner and lipstick and I definitely feel like my lips look more plump. In my project pan for next year, I do want to focus more on using up some lip product. I want to work towards a more curated lip product selection. This year, my focus was complexion products and I feel like I've been really successful at kind of narrowing things down in that, in that regard. I think next year will be the year of um, editing down and, and using up lip products. In terms of uh, stuff that I'm decluttering, I have a few items that I really love, but sadly they have gone bad. I have the Tower 28 Happy Hour blush. This was the first Tower 28 blush that I ever bought. I bought this back in 2019 and I actually bought this from a blog sale. So the person that I bought it from had this for a while and wasn't using it. And then I bought it off of her and I'm surprised that it lasted as long as it did because obviously it's, it's, older than when I bought it. Usually, you know, Tower 28 products have um, a bad reputation of going bad really quickly because it's like one of those clean beauty brands. My other Tower 28 blushes, they all smell fine. This one did go off though. It smells horrendous now. It smells really, really stale. And um, yeah, sadly I have to let it go, but I love this. This is like um, my go-to winter spring pick-me-up blush. And I really enjoyed this, but I have a blush color that accomplishes the same thing that I actually like more. And I feel like ever since I added this to my collection, I was reaching for this at times when I, before that I would be reaching for this, but I ended up liking this more. So I was reaching for this more often. So this just tells me that this kind of replaced this in my collection. And this is still good, thankfully. This is still going strong. This is the Rose Ink Azalea Blush. It's not as bright, it's not as punchy, but it still looks really, really beautiful and fresh on the cheeks. I also really love using this on the lips. So this is kind of my, my new go-to cream blush for a winter spring pick me up. These two, I have to let them go because again, they smell so bad and I haven't used them in a long time because these are very, very old, but I was hanging on to them for like emotional purposes. I was hanging on to them for also like comparison swatch purposes, but this year I think they're so old. Like these are probably 10 years old. They're relics in my makeup collection and they don't even swatch nicely anymore. So even, you know, I, I can't even justify keeping them around for swatch comparison purposes because 
they don't even swatch nicely anymore so it, it, it just doesn't do them justice i'm going to keep these in my heart as a sweet sweet makeup memory forever burberry eyeshadows in the shade midnight brown and pale barley they will forever hold a special place in my heart but i don't have to hang on to them you know they're not infinity stones i don't have to hang on to them i don't have a makeup museum i can just cherish the memories i'm finally ready to let these go i'm actually surprised that i didn't hit pan on any of them because i use these so much i can't they smell so bad <laughs> they smell so bad i can't even swatch them like they they don't even they don't even swatch nicely anymore like it's just like dust a moment of silence and a moment of appreciation for burberry eyeshadows i know that burberry beauty is still kicking they're still making stuff i know they recently launched an eyeshadow palette i just haven't been haven't been as into it as you know the burberry beauty of 2012 when Rosie Huntington Whiteley was their spokesperson and Wendy Rowe was the creative director like those are the good old days those are like that those are, those are the sweet sweet memories of Burberry Beauty that I have in my mind it's time it's time to let it go you know there are so many exciting beauty brands that are making me happy right now i think i'll be fine if i don't hang on to these thank you so much for watching this video thank you for hanging out with me today i hope you're having a really beautiful day i wish you the best holiday season i am doing best of beauty 2022 with my friend dina again this year that will be the next video that you're seeing on my channel until then take care i hope you're having a really great day and i will see you in my next video bye